Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today is Grade 6, Unit 3, Lesson 9, Practice Problems Review. This package of sliced cheese cost $2.97. How much would a package with 18 slices cost at the same price per slice? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, if we come up with a table here to help us with slices being one of our columns, and cost being our other, we know that $2.97 will get us 11 slices of cheese. And in case you're going, where did that 11 come from? It's not in the problem itself. All I see is 18. Well, this package with the 11 slices. So 11 slices is $2.97. We are trying to get to 18 slices of cheese. And so if we use a unit right now to get to one slice of cheese, you would take 11 and divide by the 11 to get to one slice of cheese. If we take the $2.97 and divide that by 11, we would end up with 27 cents. So one slice of cheese cost 27 cents. At the same price per slice, we can multiply by 18 here. And 27 cents per slice times 18 slices is $4.86. So $4.86 is our solution for a package with 18 slices of cheese. Question two, a copy machine can print 480 copies every four minutes. For each question, explain or show your reasoning. How many copies can it print in 10 minutes? Well, if we come up with a table here for copies and then for minutes, we're told 480 copies in four minutes. We are trying to get this to be 10 minutes. So if I take that middle step and find out how much for one minute. Well, four divided by four is one. So 480 divided by four is going to be 120 copies per minute. If I multiply by 10 here, 120 multiplied by 10 is 1,200. So how many copies can it print in 10 minutes? 1,200 copies. Now a teacher printed 720 copies. How long did it take to print? If we start with the table again with copies and minutes and we go with our 480 copies in four minutes idea. And now we're trying to get to 720 copies. I could figure out how long it takes for one copy. If I divide my 480 by, well, 480, and then I divide my four by 480. Four divided by 480 is a really crazy decimal, honestly. It is 0 0.083 repeating, and that's really not much fun to work with. Now, you could either leave that in your calculator, or you could write this as the fraction 1 over 120. Now, we're going to be multiplying either that extended decimal or the fraction 1 one twentieth by 720. So when I multiply by 720 here, we're going to end up with a nice answer, believe it or not, of 6. So 6 minutes for those 720 copies. Continuing on. Question three, order these objects from heaviest to lightest. Note, one pound is 16 ounces. 
one kilogram is two and two tenths pounds, and one ton is 2,000 pounds. Our goal here needs to be to get these all to be the same unit. So whether you want to get these all into pounds, all into ounces, all into kilograms, all into tons is kind of up to you. I prefer to get these kind of towards that middle unit. And in this case, I'm going to get it to be all in pounds. That's the method I'm going to use. Now, the school bus is nine tons. And I want to go from tons to pounds. Well, if I'm knowing that one ton is 2,000 pounds, nine tons is going to be nine times that 2,000, so 18,000 pounds. So that school bus weighs 18,000 pounds. What about the elephant? Well, let's go from kilograms to pounds. Now, when it comes to kilograms and pounds, we're told one kilogram is two and two tenths pounds. So, what is 5,500 kilograms worth? Well, we're going to multiply that two and two tenths by that 5,500, right? So two and two tenths times 5,500 is 12,100 pounds. So 12,100 pounds is our weight for the elephant. What about this grand piano? We need to go from ounces to pounds. Well, to do that, let me figure out some room right around here. If we have ounces and we have pounds, our fact tells us that one pound is 16 ounces. And I have 1,500, I'm sorry, 15,840 ounces. Well, if I need to get this from 16 to that, if we break this down to one ounce first. One ounce is going to be one divided by 16, which is 0 0.0625 or 625 hundred thousandths. You could use the fraction 1 16th as well. But we're going to take that and multiply it now by that 15,800 40 and get something smaller, which is 900, or I'm sorry, well, smaller than the rest. It's bigger than the 625 hundred thousands. Anywho, it's 990 pounds. And so we want heaviest to lightest. So heaviest is going to be one. Then we'll have two, three, and four being our lightest. The heaviest is the school bus. Next up is the elephant, followed by the horse, and then the grand piano. Continuing on. Andre sometimes mows lawns on the weekend to make extra money. Two weeks ago, he mowed a neighbor's lawn for half an hour and earned $10. Last week, he mowed his uncle's lawn for three halves of an hour, an hour and a half, and earned $30. This week, he mowed the lawn of a community center for two hours and earned $30. Which jobs paid better than the others? Explain your reasoning. Start with the neighbor. Let's break it down into hours and money. In a half hour, he earned $10. For his uncle, if we break this down to hours and money, three halves of an hour was $30. 
in four, we're just going to go community center, hours, and money, two hours paid, $30. What I would like to do is to find the cost for one hour for all of these so we can compare who has the better hourly rates. Well, in our neighbor's case, how do we get from one half to one? You multiply by two. And so if we multiply 10 for the half hour by two, we would get $20 for the hour. What about the uncle? How do we get from three halves to one? We're going to multiply by two thirds, the reciprocal. And when we take 30 times two thirds, 30 times two is 60, divided by three is 20. So the uncle is also paying $20 per hour. And then we have the community center. From two to one, we can multiply by one half or divide by two. We take that 30 and divide it by two and we get 15. So which jobs paid better than the others? The neighbor and the uncle paid better at $20 per hour because the community center only paid $15 per hour. Calculating, calculate and express your answer in decimal form. Well, half of 17 is 17 halves, but it wants that in decimal form, and I'm looking at that going, okay, that's the same thing as 8 and a half, which is 8 and 5 tenths, or 8.5 as some of us love to say, but it's 8 and 5 tenths. Three-fourths of 200. Well, 3 times 200 is 600 over 4. If I take 600 and divide that by 4, we get 1. Then a 5 in the tens place. And then a 0 left over. This is really just 150. Two tenths of 40. Well, one tenth of 40 is equal to four. So two tenths of 40 is going to equal two times that, which would be eight. Now, 25 hundredths of 60 is the same thing as one fourth of 60, which is 60 over 4, which is just going to be 15. And now we get to a lovely question in question 6. Here is a polygon. Decompose this polygon so that its area can be calculated. All measurements are in centimeters. So A is decompose. Well. Let us see. There are two different ways of attacking this question. You could draw a box all the way around the outside, find the area of that box and subtract out all these little pieces. That's certainly one way. I'm going to take the method where you cut up the inside. Cutting up the heart, it's kind of sad. Anyways. Here we have a triangle, a rectangle, and two trapezoids. Now if you know how to find the area of a trapezoid, go for it. If you don't, you have to continue breaking this down into the two triangles each in the square. Now, for our giant triangle here, this base appears to be 12, and our height appears to be 6. And so the area of that triangle is base times height divided by 2. So 12 times 6 divided by 2. 
which is 72 divided by 2. And so the area of this large triangle is equal to 36. This rectangle above, we have length times width, so 12 times 3, which gets us an area also of, coincidentally, 36. If we focus on the squares now, everything on the top part here is heights of 2. This square is 2 times 2 with an area of 4, as is that one. The triangles. Well, 1 half base times height, or base times height, divided by 2 for all of these is going to be 2 times 2 divided by 2. 2 times 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the triangles all have areas of 2. Add these things all up. We have 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 36 plus 36 which leaves us with 8 plus 8 plus 36 plus 36 add those up and you end up with 88 and this was in just looks like units so we could write 88 square units for our solution. So divvy it up, find the areas, and add them up. And that is it for this lesson. Grade 6, Unit 3, Lesson 9. Good luck.